Hey, hey, hello! Uh, my name is Shelly and welcome uh, to my little corner of the internet. <laughs> so, today I thought I would do like everybody else around the internet, or YouTube rather, uh, and react to one star reviews of some of my favourite books. There's not really much to explain before I get into it, so, you know, let's get into the one-star reviews of some of my faves and uh, maybe cry a little, so if I cry, Katie, this one is for you. So, you know, let's start with Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. Uh, this is a series that I've reread so many times. Uh, I mean, it's not by any means the perfect book series in the, the entire world, but it's just kind of nostalgic in a way. I like it. I mean, nothing's perfect. I, I do know. I do know this, but you know. So let's find some one-star reviews because there are apparently a lot of them, so... <laughs> okay. This one starts off great, then. This is a negative review. If you enjoyed the book, that's great. Sadly, I didn't, so please respect my opinion, as I will respect yours. I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. The rant begins. Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. Chapter 1. We're presented with a pretty confusing situation. Without knowing who's who and what is going on, I almost thought I had by mistake pick up the sequel because it felt like I was missing out on something. But at least we have what it seems like a kick-ass main character, Rose, and a strong female friendship between her and Lissa, so I was like... I mean... Yeah... I, I, <laughs> I mean, the beginning of the book is really like, it just throws you in there, honestly. I was also a little confused if I'd accidentally picked up a wrong book or something. I was like, okay, this is, well, yeah, like they say in the little review here. We are thrown into the middle. Then a mildly interesting premise suddenly turns into high school drama and terrible writing. So I was like... Okay, okay. Things keep getting worse because Rose is acting like the spoiled 13 year old we've all been, despite her being in what, 17? <laughs> Thinking she's tough shit and that insulting authority figures, being rude and punching people in the face whenever they disagree with her, is the best course of action. So while trying really hard to be a badass, she ends up looking and like an immature brat and I was like, I mean, yeah, yeah, sure, but I I choose not to get annoyed by that. <laughs> by this point, I had almost forgotten about the whole vampire thing because the book was basically a cheaper version of Mean Girls with a lot of slut-shaming, girl-on-girl hate and most characters just being juvenile and stupid, so I was like... <laughs> I mean, this review is fair enough, honestly. You know, let's just continue with it. But then I thought, there must be a reason why so many people love this book. You can't give up just yet, because apparently I really hate myself. <laughs> I mean, um... Uh, yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> A lot of nonsensical things happened. Dread animals started to turn up everywhere. Rose was more annoying than ever. Some high school hierarchy bullshit. More girl on girl hate. A boring love interest that treated Rose like a misbehaving child. Which she was, but I still wanted to slap him for it. And by then I was about to fall asleep. <laughs> and 
answer a rushed and underwhelming ending a, and boring characters being more boring than usual on top of stupidity, internalized sexism and a plot that consisted solely on young girls hating on each other and on boys calling them names and being generally awful. Add some horrible writing and a fucking weird pacing and that made me want to DNF the book at least every two pages. The hype is a liar! <laughs> I will not be continuing with this series. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. <laughs> They're not completely wrong, let's be honest. It is a bit of a weird start to a book. Uh, and yeah, it is kind of a like bitchy high school hierarchy kind of a thing. But let's be fair, they are in high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I mean, there might be more tears if I continue laughing like this because, yeah. Okay, let's let's see what someone else has has said. Oh, okay. So DNF at one hundred pages, and they apparently buddy read it with a bunch of people. I tried, I really did, but it's so boring, and my eyeballs are literally falling out of my eye sockets. <laughs> I've watched a movie a long time ago and thought it was shitty, so I th <laughs> I think it's about time I pick the book and see for myself. If it's better than the movie. <laughs> it is better than the movie. I mean, the movie is kind of shit. I, I, I'm not gonna lie about that. And it's, and it's, it is kind of sad because there are some very good actors in it, but the writing of the movie <laughs> was shit. And whatever they tried to do was just shit. So yes, the movie is shit. The book is slightly better, but I feel like you need to continue on with the series to actually get a love for it. But I mean, fair enough. Don't if you don't like it, don't continue with it unless you hate yourself. Then do. <laughs> Shall we do one more? Okay. These books just aren't good. I don't know why I read two of them. Skip the book and watch the god-awful movie. It's so bad it's good. It contains one of my favourite shitty movie lines of all time. They say you're a god. Well, I'm an atheist. An atheist with a big gun. <laughs> oh my god, this is hilarious. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean... <laughs> I thought I was gonna go like highly disagree with them or something. I found them very amusing. <laughs> yeah, these are tears of laughter here. Okay, so let's move on to another series that I very, very much love. Uh, and uh, yeah, whatever you say, I cannot be told otherwise. And it is Die For Me by Amy Plum. So let's see what other people thought of it. Will I laugh as much as I did for Vampire Academy? Or will I be crying this time? Let's see. We don't need to see the Edward Bella romance over and over and over again. Seriously, we've already seen it. It was called Twilight. They even made a movie about it. We don't need to see Bella with fallen angels and we don't need to see Bella with zombies, especially when the zombie is a carbon copy of Edward. <laughs> mm, no. Does Vincent have a godlike good looks? Check. An aura of danger? Check. Is he a virgin immortal? Check. Has he lived without love for decades? Check. Does he fall in love with a heroine for no apparent reason? Check. Is he a stalker? Check. Doesn't sleep? Check. Has a family of other immortals, including a manic pixie dream girl who becomes the heroine's best friend, Alice slash Charlotte. One who resents the heroine and isn't thrilled with her immortal existence, Rosalie slash Charles. An older figure who mentors the group, Carly slash Jean-Baptiste. An irreverent extrovert, Emmett slash Jules. And who trains the other in battle techniques, 
Jasper slash Gaspard. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Is Kate an introvert? Check. Has she moved away from home? Check. Does she fall in love with the hero because of his looks? Check. Does she rhapsodize constantly about how gorgeous he is? Check. Does she sound more like a 40-year-old woman than a 16-year-old girl? Check. Does she have any interest outside reading? In a wild fit of originality, the author does give Kate another hobby. Sitting around in museums, staring at paintings until she goes into an art trance. Luckily, since the hobby is in no way resembling something an actual teenager would do, Kate's still on track to grow up to be Bella. <laughs> Kate doesn't understand what Vincent sees in her. Sounds familiar? This insecurity is based on the fact that he's as handsome as a Greek god. Sound familiar? She has a special ability most humans don't have. Sound familiar? She fits in great with the immortal family, most of whom adore her. Sounds familiar? <laughs> she and Vincent have a chase sleepover. Sound familiar? She's obsessed with how good looking he is. Sound familiar? Oh my god, this is getting repetitive. <laughs> he's all he's... He's all she thinks about. Sound familiar? He slows her down sexually. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> Vincent thinks he should leave her alone for her own good, but is an empty shell without her. Sound familiar? The villain gets Kate through a family member. Sound familiar? There's no action until the end of the book. Sound familiar? He's so good looking. Sound familiar? You wouldn't believe how good looking he is. Sound familiar? Uh, that Vincent sure is one good looking dude. Sound familiar? <laughs> Vincent is perfect. Sound familiar? Obsessive love, obsessive love, obsessive love. Sound familiar? <laughs> I'm making a plea to all the authors out there. Please do something original, please. Is your creativity so MIA that you can't create a fresh love story? Believably flawed characters and a plot we haven't seen 5,000 times before. Point Bonus points if you create a villain who's not a cartoon character. I'll say this about Stephanie Meyer. She explored the whole obsessive stalkerific teen girl undead guy love story thoroughly. She used hundreds and hundreds of pages to do this trope. Use <laughs> so you don't have to replicate it. Do your own thing. Give us a love story that surprises and delights. Give us something we haven't seen before. So... Amy Plum herself has stated that she read Twilight and wanted to do it better. So yes, it is kind of like a copy of Twilight, like with the characters and sort of with the plot and so on and so forth. However, uh, Vincent doesn't leave Kate like Edward did with Bella. Kate is actually the one that breaks up with Vincent because she can kind of see that this is not a good relationship the way that it is going. So that's the twist. Uh, however, she does take him back because there are like three more series. But after, it, and it's not like she goes around like Bella did and just somberly look depressed for months on end and then she's not even really alive after that. Uh, she continues on with her life. I mean, she still thinks about Vincent, but not in the same way that Bella does with Edward. So, yeah, I don't think you read the book thoroughly. Um, <laughs> also, highly repetitive review, but okay. I, I was kind of amused by it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Let's do one more. Note, I am updating my reviews. You know, older, wiser, more eloquent. <laughs> Interesting. Is your original review here as well? Fucking hell, this is a long one. Okay. Like, let's, let's find some shorter ones. We cannot keep on reading. Oh, this one goes through the hole. Damn it, give me a short review.
Jeez, that was... Oh, people. For, for someone who didn't actually like the book, you've written a load of things about it. Oh my god. My eyes cannot take this. Okay, this one is a bit shorter, so... It's still a bunch of text, though. <laughs> to say I didn't like this book is an understatement, but I finished it. Yep, I trudged through it, hoping beyond hope that at one point this would redeem itself and turn into this brilliant piece of fiction instead of a French spin-off on Twilight. Uh, it never did. So I'll do a quick summation of why I didn't like this book and follow it up with a dive for me versus Twilight breakdown to show just how light these books really are. Yeah, we, we already know that they're alike, honestly. Review. After the tragic death of her parents, Kate Mercier is dragged to Paris by her older party girl sister to reside under the care of her French grandparents. Horribly depressed Kate finds solace in books and museums, rarely socialising with her peers at school, until she meets uber hot Parisian Vincent and Kate's and the <laughs> and Kate's depression is long forgotten as she slowly falls in love with him but as their relationship grows Kate suspects something isn't normal about Vincent and in a daring move she forces her way into his family and finds out the truth Vincent is a revenant an undead being forced to save people as a compulsion and to make mad <laughs> And to make matters worse, like all universal truth behind everything it must have its opposite. Kate is faced with the evil revenants, those whose compulsion is it is to kill. <laughs> this just drips with yawn-worthy material, but I was struck by the hype. I should have paid attention to more reviews, because the people that are saying it is just like Twilight, well, they are right, but it came nowhere near being as good as Twilight. Between the hockey dialogue and lovey-dovey phrasing, the semi-formed plot and silliness of the whole Revenant mythology, and then the third and and then the sudden wrap-up at the end. Die For Me was just dead in the water. Don't waste your money or your time. <laughs> to expound on my silliness theory, let's go over the finer points of what is a revenant. A revenant is a person that dies in the act of saving someone's lives. No one knows why everyone comes back as a revenant, just some do. It takes three days, vampire-like, <laughs> to come back. But then you are undead and have to live the rest of your existence with a crazy compulsion to save other people. But the thing you <laughs> but the thing is, you die when you save other people, and each time you die, you age. You can't help it. You have to save these people. You have to go looking to save people. Then there are the evil revenants who die in pursuit of heinous death crimes. They come back as the opposite with a compulsion of depravity. So they buy nightclubs and live in catacombs so they can kill people. Right. Okay. So, they... <laughs> yeah. Every time they die, they go back to the age when they were when they died. But if they don't die, they age. So you got that one wrong. <laughs> um, I mean, again, yes, you've you've clearly seen that it's very much alike Twilight, but you're kind of missing the point. Twilight is like a million books that are this thick, and Die For Me are three books that are this thick. So who's wasted whose time, really? Honestly. <clears throat> Honestly, I mean, this one, this one, this one, this one. Yeah. Okay, here is a short one. <laughs> yes, 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 I'm done. What can I say? Please don't read it, ever. <laughs> I mean, to the point. You don't explain why, but you're to the point. Oh, people have written so many things. Okay, so, 
Let's go in for a third and final book because I feel like this video is going to be very, very long. Um, but uh, this is fun. <laughs> so, let's go with Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. Okay, so this is apparently an edit from a year later, I guess, from having read it. I don't know. That's it. I have had my fill of too many stupid brain cell destroying comments posted on this review in the past few months asking me to write a best selling book before attempting to take apart Rick Riordan's writing as if the exclusive privilege of negatively criticizing a book is accorded only to published writer and not ordinary reviews and readers. <laughs> I do have the right to record my feelings about a book in my review and it's such a shame that I'm actually being forced to put up this edit to make people aware of this fact. If this review hurts your sentiments as a fan, I am sorry I can't help you there. You must grow up and learn to... <laughs> what is that word? Dick don't... I don't know what that word is. Opinions coexist in harmony on the same page. That is all. <laughs> Caution, brutal honesty ahead, read at the expense of having to respect someone else's views. I love that. I mean, yeah, you, you, can, you can love something, you can hate something, but I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinions, honestly. Okay, so let's read the actual <laughs> review. What a feeble attempt at recreating the Harry Potter magic. Aside from being highly unoriginal and unimaginative, the book grates on your nerves due to the frequency of Percy's lame attempts at sounding witty. Seriously, I'm supposed to laugh at it. <laughs> Seriously, I'm supposed to laugh at his observations on the bull man and barnyard animals. <laughs> <laughs> not only did the writer not bother racking his brains to come up with a plot or a proper story, choosing instead to recycle key elements of the Harry Potter series, but he also ignored important aspects of a fantasy novel, one of which is the language. To call the narration just bad will be an understatement. Same can be said about the dialogue and the way the plot progresses. It's one cliched event unfolding after another. The only novel thing about this book is the seamless integration of Greek mythology into a fantasy-based setup. The one star is for that. <laughs> and so I'd like to put a premature end to my review because I just realised the futility of writing one of a book I hated. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I like this person. <laughs> Ooh, this review has been hidden because it contains spoilers. To view it, click here. Okay then. Oh, how much have you written? Oh, not a lot. Okay, good. I had looked forward to reading this because of the numerous awards it had won, and I liked the Greek mythology aspect. About two pages in, <laughs> I was rolling my eyes at how predictable and cliché it was. I realised that it's written for a young audience, and so the plot may not be complex, but this plot seemed really rushed. The protagonist is completely unbelievable. <laughs> Percy doesn't seem to bat an eye when he kills his teacher with a sword after she transforms in front of him. He thinks he must have just imagined it. He barely sheds a tear when his mother dies in front of him in a flash of light. He sort of just shrugs when he is told he is to go on a quest to Hades to steal a lightning bolt. <laughs> These are just a few of the things that really annoyed me. I read about 45% of the book and just couldn't read another page and there were so many other great books out there to read. How did this series get so many awards and high praise? <laughs> I mean, his mother doesn't actually die. Spoiler. She's, she's kind of taken. Okay. And he's in shock. He's also like 12. So give him a break. Okay, let's do one final one and... Yeah. 
was forced to read this lame American ripoff of Harry Potter for my children's lit course. Almost everything about it irritates me deeply. The cheesy humour, Percy's effortless awesomeness and lack of any actual character depth or personality, the concept of inborn knowledge like understanding ancient Greek, the constant info dumps from other characters explaining things to Percy. Percy? Every single time the stereotypically and pointlessly evil Ares group were mentioned, the word ugly was used to describe them. Even if a chair went up from the table, it was an ugly chair. And Percy's smelly stepdad Gabe's surname is Ugliano. <laughs> oh yes, a very subtle. I wanted to get a pen and paper out and start running a tally of the obvious Harry Potter reference. Sis, <laughs> I won't list them all because there are too many to count. But my favourite was when one of the teachers actually said to him, Percy Jackson, our little celebrity. <laughs> I don't actually remember that part, but <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Honestly, that was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> definitely want to do this again. I am very much under the opinion that people are entitled to whatever opinions they want. If it's good or bad, if it like, if it's the opposite of mine, that is fair enough. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. And I love when people go on rants like this. I mean, I do it too. So I'm like, I'm not at fault. I don't write like essay type reviews of books telling it, saying they are like a ripoff of Twilight when the, I'm pretty sure it's still on the author's website that her idea for Dive For Me came from reading Twilight and she wanted to do a better job. And I actually agree that Dive For Me is a better version of Twilight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing is perfect, so I mean, why should that be either? But I did highly enjoy. <laughs> I really still, I love, I still love all of these books. And I mean, these reviews were very hilarious to me. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> Until next time, take care. Oh, bye bye. <laughs>